Spending time back to the late 80s, Jonathan and I met in Buffalo. We got together and just started uh, doing soundtracks for films and things. And then, as time went on, we started writing more like songs with more structure and words and things. A lot of the ideas that we were doing in the beginning ended up on your self-esteem. Our first record it came out in, in about 1991. After that, we, we did an album Boses, and we did another album, See You on the Other Side. In 1993, or no, 1995, I think it was, and uh, you, you know, Deserter Songs came out in 1998, and here we are. It's been a strange ride over the past uh, six months for us. A lot of new situations. Just when we thought things couldn't get any stranger than they were in the past and any more bizarre, we've found that things have gotten stranger and more bizarre than I think we ever would have imagined. She's a goddess on a highway, a goddess in a car, a goddess going faster than she's ever gone before. She's a goddess on a highway, a goddess in a on the road for as long as we've been this tour. It's rather disorienting and you find yourself confused in doing the smallest things that used to come natural to you. Ordering a drink at a bar, even knowing where you are, these things don't come easy after a certain point. The music can hold you down for the hour and a half that you play, but for the other 22 odd hours a day, you just find yourself drifting aimlessly and waiting for somebody to grab you by the hand and lead you to this car, to this hotel room, or to this dressing room. I think the Catskill Mountains and the Hudson Valley where we live are special to us just because that is our home. Nearly all of our friends just relate to us as people that they see at the bar, that you see down by the river. You know, like I grew up there and that's, you know, where I've spent the majority of my life. And it's a good feeling when you hear like a lyric in a song or sometimes just the sound will evoke like, you know, the mountains or the river we live near. It's nice to just go back and not talk about anything about music and not have to explain where Slovenia is on a map or what the girls were like and in the making of this record for three years without leaving home I think it's 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 everything that you go back and you settle yourself back in to a degree because those are the people who will be with you all the way to the grave and when you just stare blankly at the wall for days on end, they feel that perhaps it's something they've done or in some way they're not able to compete in entertaining you the same way you are when you're on tour. It's hard to even talk to anybody in a, in a rational kind of way. I mean, you can't really even tell them what happened or anything. They just wouldn't understand. It takes a bit of effort and probably quite a while for most of us to just become people again. It's the only hour and a half in the day 
that we have any control over what is happening to us or who's around us. It's the one shield, it's the one blanket you can wrap yourself in to protect you, you know, from the toads and the vampires and the trolls that surround you every day in this stupid business. It's the one, you know, it's the one roof you have over your head to prevent the whole thing from crushing you. In a strange way, it's a, an hour and a half of silence. It's just the six of us together where you can actually play the songs and sing them, but in your mind it's complete silence. It's like being at home, you know, and just sitting by the riverside or somewhere. It's, it's strange. It's like we get on stage and then it's like that's our living room and there just might happen to be a thousand people watching us, but um, yeah, they happen to be watching the most intimate portion of the day when we're, as Jonathan says, you know, we're sitting around talking basically. It's, it's just a brief bit of heaven. To a dream, I took a turn and promised to return the way we were, the day we met, the way I lit your cigarette, the way it trailed into a stream. ideas that were in Opus 40, the video, uh, came from, from Anton. Some of the personality obviously comes from us, but luckily we were able to find the common ground where we felt comfortable with him. I think that's why most of us are, you know, thrilled to the moon with that particular video, because it, it, it allowed us to just be ourselves. It was like an hour and a half on stage. And I like the long fingernails. <laughs> Where well, she tossed all night like a raging sea Woke up and climbed from the suicide machine With her Spanish candles and her Persian bowls Stuck on the rocks inside Opus 40 stone And scratching her wrists in the pouring rain She collapses down upon the ocean floor Again
It was more of the Klaus Kinski interpretation from Vampyr, the Herzog film, mixed with Dr. Strangelove and Montgomery C. Burns from The Simpsons, <laughs> all thrown together in one for my character, you know. Those three probably being the three biggest influences I have. You know. Next, Mirabel featuring.